Hello and welcome to another edition of Conspirator Brock's Pull List. This is my post for the week of December 18th, uh, 2019. Ginormous week this week. Um, it being the week before Christmas and uh, they're not really, companies aren't really shipping stuff on Christmas week. Um, yeah, needless to say, it is a ginormous week. Last week was big, this week's even bigger. Not to mention that tons of huge titles this week. Uh, DC just just put everything in this week. Uh, could have spread it out a little bit better. Could have pushed things to next week, but they didn't. So let's get right into it. First up, we have American Gods, The Moment of the Storm, number eight. Um, I've been enjoying the comic book adaptation of American Gods. This is the third um, miniseries that's uh, basically covering the whole book. Um, so it's almost over. It makes me want to go back and reread the book. It's been a long time since I've read it, and um, I really want to kind of see where it goes. I do have a, a anniversary edition that I want to check out, so maybe uh, down the road. Next up we have Aquaman at number 55. Um, Kelly Sue DeConnick's done an okay job with it. She had a rough start to it, um, so but I'm continuing with Aquaman uh, <clears throat> despite that. The Year of the Villain stuff is, is underway and Black Manta's wreaking havoc with a huge uh, Black Manta-like mech with um, apparently his dad's um, consciousness or program as uh, the AI or the thing that's running the mech. So we'll see what happens with Aquaman. Next up is A Basket Full of Heads, number three. I uh, really enjoyed the first two. Fantastic, great stuff. If you like horror, check it out. It's it's a solid, solid book. Um, Joe Hill, I need to read his Lock and Key stuff. I've only re read the first trade, uh, and it's been so long that I can't even remember what I read, but I did enjoy it when I read it. So mm, we'll get to it. Next up is the last issue for this run, and it is, it's bittersweet. It's sad to see it go. I'm excited for the future and where uh, this creator and his the people that works with him uh, go, but uh, it is Tom King's last issue on Batman. This is Batman 85. Uh, it's an extra big size issue. This finishes off Tom King's run that has been going on since 2016. Uh, Tom King has just done a fantastic and amazing job with Batman over these past three years and it's just really quality, quality books. Um, I'm, I've actually already read it. It's a really good issue. Um, it ends the, the series uh, very well, I think. Uh, <clears throat> there, um, but we'll, we're going into Batman, Catwoman after this. So I'm curious to see um, what he continues to talk about. Um, since he seemed to tie up most everything, um, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, everything Tom King has done with Batman, fantastic. Um, if you haven't read it, you're really missing out. Um, if uh, you dropped off at during Nightmares, come back, pick up the City of Bane stuff. It's really, really solid stuff. So, sad to see Tom go on Batman, but now we're on to um, Batman, Catwoman, and Strange Adventures, and and just all the, the great stuff that... that uh, Tom King uh, or his talent is going to bring for the DC universe so yeah I'm super excited for 2020. Next up we have another ending book and that is um, Batman Last Night on Earth number three. This is um, finishes Greg Capullo and uh, Scott Snyder's or Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's Batman run uh, which started in the new 52 back in 2011 and um, Scott Snyder's done is just an amazing, amazing storyteller. Greg Capullo's art on Batman is top notch. Uh, really, really fits the character. Um, yeah, what can I say? I'm I'm really excited to see how he wraps up his Batman run. Um, it's nice to see that he got the extra chance to do and add to what he had done before. Um, but uh, yeah, another one ending. So yeah. Uh, next up, we have another Batman title. And that's Batman Superman number five. Uh, we got You're the Villain in full gear, and we're dealing with the Infected right now. And the Infected is basically the uh, Secret Six, or who the uh, Batman who laughs has turned dark. Um, so if you guys don't know what's going on, um, basically You're the Villain is is in full swing. Um, Luther gave out his, his, like, here, here's the thing you need to beat your... Um, the good guy once and for all and you know if you take it you can win um and there just so much is coming out of it we we have the infected stuff we have 
Howl Arisen, um, which uh, I will get to in a little bit. Um, we also have just a bunch of stuff coming out of Justice League and Dark Multiverse stuff, Tales of the Dark Multiverse. Everything kind of seems to be kind of just setting up something, and I'm we're I'm really curious to see what that is um, because we don't know yet, and uh, it's going to be really interesting going forward in 2020, not knowing exactly what DC has planned, but kind of. Uh, having a, a sense of where they're going, um, but uh, yeah, so I don't know about you, but I've been enjoying it. Batman, Superman, it's fantastic. Uh, again, uh, Williamson knocks it out of the park. Next up is a Bloodshot number four. Um, this is the um, Bloodshot again. They renumbered it. They restarted it. It's Bloodshot. I mean, it's okay. It's not. It's not Jeff Lemire. It's not the early stuff. Um, so I think it's kind of floundering a bit, um, but. Uh, I'm gonna stick with it for a little bit and see if it uh, if it kind of writes itself. Next up, we have uh, Catwoman number eighteen, um, a fantastic Joel Jones cover, and uh, what, what can I say? Catwoman's been a great series since it launched after uh, the uh, Batman Fifty issue, so it's nice to see uh, Catwoman back in her own title and kind of doing her own thing, even though she is connected to the Batman universe and it does go back into that. Um, but yeah, I'm super, I, I, I just, it, I just enjoy reading it every month. So, and, uh, this is probably the big, big book, the biggest book, um, of the week. Um, and it's definitely the end of something and it's the end of something that has taken three years on paper, but two years, two years in a month or sorry, three years by number, but two years in a month by like actual time. Um, and that is Doomsday Clock 12 is finally here. Uh, I got a chance to read this a few days ago um, because I went and picked up our shipment early because our shipment was just ginormous and it was just ridiculous. If I did not pick it up um, when I did on Monday, we would probably still be processing late, late into Tuesday night and we wouldn't have recorded a podcast and, and that's just no go. So... I'm glad I picked it up. Glad I got to read it early. Um, John's is just a masterful storyteller and really, really great at giving you those small little details and just making everything work and and just flush out so smoothly. Um, sets up so much for the DC Universe going forward, much like the DC uh, Universe Rebirth issue did um, back in 2016. Just really, really solid stuff. I cannot wait, honestly, for a deluxe size hardcover of Doomsday Clock. But it has been a fantastic ride. Despite it taking two years and months to come out, I still really, really love Doomsday Clock. And it's one of my top books of the year. Next up, we have Flash Forward number four. Uh, following Wally West uh, and his redemption after Heroes in Crisis. It's been okay. Um, I kind of... Feel like they're 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 trying to get him back to a norm, um, especially with kind of the backlash that people got that people had after Heroes in Crisis, which I think is unwarranted. Um, Heroes in Crisis did something that changed up a character, shook the character up. Let's see where this goes. Let's see how this pans out. Um, but fandom sucks sometimes, and uh, I think DC is trying to course correct a little too quickly, in my opinion. Um, but Flash Forward's been okay, and I'm curious to see where it finalizes. Next up is another book that ends something, and that is uh, Harleen number three. Um, I read the first one. I have not read the second one. Um, the oversized Prestige Plus format just does not entice me to pick it up and read it uh, right away. So I have a huge stack of, of the Prestige Plus books that um, I'm like, yeah, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. Um, so I have not started Joker Killing Smile or Killer Smile. Um, I have not started the question, and I seriously need to read these. Uh, because they're black label and they're by great creators and uh, yeah, I need to get on, on, on back on track Next up we have the infected the commissioner um, one shot um, These one shots about the infected uh, the people that the Batman who last was infected has been really really good um, The Donna Troy one was eh, not so much. It was wordy as all hell like Man that took a lot to read that book. Um, but uh, yeah overall they've been good I'm curious to see uh, the commissioners uh, one. So next up we have uh, Joker Killer Smile number two. Um, what can I say? I'm super stoked to try and read Jeff Lemire's uh, 
the prestige plush black label book um but again like harleen and all the others i'm just behind so uh, maybe i'll catch up over the uh break uh since we're coming up close to um winter break or christmas break for educators um maybe i'll, I'll take some time and just sit and read Next up, we have uh, Justice League number 38. Uh, Scott Snyder's been doing a fantastic job with Justice League. It's almost coming to an end, um, and then he's moving to something else. And so I'm really curious to see what that is. And I think that's part of what um, uh, Year of the Villain, um, Hell Arisen, um, all of the stuff that's been going on about Leviathan, everything that's kind of moving towards something big that's happening in the DC Universe. Um, and I think we're going to get that, you know, Close to about May, April or May of 2020, hopefully, but we'll see. Next up is Alas God, number three. The first two are okay. I'm. It's a beautiful book, like drawn very, very well, but I'm not sure if I'm really like engrossed in it or, or it's capturing me anymore. Um, I mean, it's fair. It's good. There's a lot of kind of, oh, read this short story in the back or this this poem or this um, musical thing. And, and so it's, it's very kind of, it's trying to build a world, but instead of building the world through the story, it's building the world through, oh, here's some extra stuff I want you to read that's not comic book. Um, which can work in some instances if it's something that's really like grabbing, but in other instances it may not work so well. And here, I don't think it works so well. But we'll see. Sorry for the yawning. I had 14 hours I was at work yesterday. Four hour, like three hours of podcasting, 10 hours of work. It, it was ridiculous yesterday of just how much I was doing with uh, the shipment. So um, you're lucky I'm getting this up early today. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm super tired. Not to mention that I try need to need to get some good sleep tonight because tomorrow, Thursday, the 19th, I'm going to watch Star Wars Rise of Skywalker at 10.15, which means I'm going to be up even late later than that on Thursday. So Ugh, ugh, I'm going to be so tired. Let's, but let's keep going. First up, or next up, we have Legion of Superheroes, number two. Um, I love the first issue. Millennium was a great kind of lead into it. I'm really curious what they do with Rose, because Rose kind of just popped up in the first issue, but didn't happen, nothing really happened with her. So um, I just, I'm curious to see what Bendis does with it. But the Legion is back, and it's great, and it's amazing, and if you're you're just curious about like a bunch of different characters, check out Legion. It's fantastic. Uh, next up, we have uh, Metal Men number three. The first issue was good. The second issue kind of flounders, so I'm really kind of seeing where issue three goes. Uh, if it doesn't catch me, I'm, 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 I can't. I got to get rid of it. Next up is um, a continuation. I mean, it's a continuation, I guess, but it's a, con a brand new mini, and that's um, The Old Guard Force Multiplied number one uh, by Greg Rucka. Uh, the Old Guard miniseries I really enjoyed uh, before. It was good um, and solid. Uh, great concept. So I'm curious to see what happens in this one. Um, but again, I'm going to probably start having to cut my independent reading down a bit going forward. <sighs> wake up, Brock. Come on, wake up. Um, just because there's so much reading, um, but not to mention that you know there's only so much credit I have. So... Uh, next up, we have Shazam number nine. Uh, Jeff Johns just loves this character. I love this character. Um, I'm really curious to see where it goes. It's been doing a really solid job with it. Uh, but Johns really makes, really cares for Shazam and, and really has tried to make Shazam relevant in today's era. And I think he's done it very well. If you haven't checked out Shazam, I do recommend it, especially the one that came out of New 52 at the end of Justice League. It's collected in a trade format. You can read the whole story, but it's good, good stuff. Next up, we have Star Wars Adventures number 29. Yep, that's for my son. Maybe he'll read it. Maybe he won't. Um, we'll see. New number one. I know. A new number one this week. Uh, first and foremost, I am super excited. It's back. Um, but that is uh, The Suicide Squad number one by Tom Taylor. I'm really excited and curious to see uh, what Tom has in store for The Suicide Squad. Um, Tom's writing, I think, really will add something to the book, so we'll see. Um, but yeah, Suicide Squad, can't I can't wait to see what happens with it. Next up is Teen Titans, number 37. Uh, we're going to find out who the other is, 
Um, I've enjoyed Adam Glass's run on it, so it's really hard for me to drop this book. Um, but again, I've never been a huge Teen Titans fan, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, next up is The Visitor, number one, from uh, Valiant, and Paul Levitz is writing, and I'm like really curious to see because I like Paul Levitz's writing. So yeah, I'm super stoked for The Visitor. Next up, we have Wonder Woman number 83. Uh, Orlando is taking over writing duties on, I believe, on Wonder Woman um, going forward. Uh, he's okay. I like his writing style um, occasionally. It's, it's hit or miss for me. Uh, but we'll see if he can uh, pull it out with Wonder Woman. Uh, next up is uh, Wonder Woman Dead Earth, a new black label title. Um, I picked this up just to check it out to see if, it's, uh, if I enjoy it. I don't know if I will, so this might be something that I just get rid of. But we'll see. Uh, Wonder Woman Giant number two, uh, Jimmy Palmiotti actually uh, tweeted the other day that nobody's reviewed number issue one or issue two of this. Um, and I think it's mainly because it's kind of just something that's not necessarily, I mean, stores are buying this to kind of just have on the shelves for people to just pick up and, and peruse. Um, I think they're great. They, they have, you know, two brand new stories in them or, you know, two, like, you know, a couple brand new stories. And then more pages of content of classic stuff that, that's solid. So I think that they're a good investment for five bucks. You, you can't beat it with the amount of content that you get. So as for whether they're good or not, um, I enjoyed the first Wonder Woman one. So, um, But I'm only reading the new stories. Um, I'm not reading the old stories uh, because I, I'm, I'm not... I've read so many comics, I don't need to read an individual issue of something unless it's on my list of stuff to read. So, but yeah, Wonder Woman Giant. Check it out. Um, and I've been talking about this um, for a while, but we have uh, Year of the Villain Hell Arisen number one of four comes out this week. Um, so we're going to see what goes on with um, the Batman Who Laughs. And this is basically Batman Who Laughs apparently uh, versus Apex Lex. So I'm curious to see where it goes. It's written by Terry in the fourth, who's done an amazing job with Snyder on Justice League. So... Hopefully this leads into um, what we can, ex or like some new stuff from um, DC that we're going to get in 2020 going forward. But, yeah. Woo! Morning. Wake up. I'm awake. So, uh, that's it for my poll list. Um, I did pick up some variants uh, this week. Uh, there's a decent stack of them. So the first one is the variant for Batman 85. really thought that was a cool one there uh of course i picked up the one for the batman last night on earth number three i like the catwoman 18 variant uh doomsday clock has of course had its variant um but this time it had a blank ish yellow variant um so i snagged that up as well uh harleen of course had a variant for its um prestige plus and i'm a sucker for harley so i had to pick that up um, and then Justice League 38 had a br great Tony Daniel variant cover there, showing off the team, so I picked that one up. Suicide Squad, of course I have to get the variant for Suicide Squad, and of course I have to get the blank cover for Suicide Squad, because I'm just a sucker like that. Um, Wonder Woman, of course, has the amazing, amazing variants, and I just picked that one up for 83. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it uh, for what I picked up. There's a couple items on my read list. Uh, first up is Once in Future, number five. Um, it's coming close to clo uh, ending, ending, but I think this might have been turned in from a mini into an ongoing. I'm not sure, but I've enjoyed it so far. If you have not yet checked out Once in Future, if you can find it, it's the first few issues, go ahead, pick them up, read it. It's, it's good and fun. And then finally on my read list is X-Force number four. Um, X-Force is just, they're cranking it out, um, probably because X-Men uh, has been delayed. And the other X titles for that Dawn of X stuff, Marauders, Fallen Angel, Excalibur, and um, New Mutants, um, they're just turning those out left and right, left and right, left and right. I've lost interest in those four. The only two I'm reading currently are the X-Force and the X-Men ones. Um, so we'll see how far that goes. Uh, but again, I think Hawks and Pox did something really amazing for the X-Men universe and for Marvel and for you know, just getting people interested in mutants again, but I don't know if what came after it is going to hold the interest and be as, as good or, it, you know, as, you know, not maybe, it doesn't need to necessarily be better than Hawks and Pox, even though 
everyone would, I would love it if it was. Um, it's not hitting Hawks and Pox like expectations. And like you can really, really see that um, on, on the shelves. So we'll see. But that's it for this week's pull list. Um, I did not um, bring one thing home, and that was an, um, the new Animal Man Omnibus, the Jeff Lemire Omnibus, uh, all the New 52 stuff. Uh, the entire run of Animal Man, uh, they have an omnibus form. Uh, if you go over to conspiratorrock.com and there's no ad blocks on, uh, that's the featured thing for my Amazon uh, um, item. So uh, I will hopefully be getting that um, soonish. When I do, I'll feature it here. Um, but I wanted to let you guys know that I was going to get that, but um, I left it. We're going to try and sell it in the store. <laughs> oh, man. If I get, if it sells, we'll get another copy. If it doesn't sell, then I'll just take that one. So. Uh, but yeah, Animal Man by Jeff Lemire is solid, a solid book, and you should really think about uh, picking up some uh, the single issue or any of it and reading it. It's good. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Leave your comments down in the comment section below. Uh, let me know what you're getting um, this week. Let me know um, how your what you you know any Christmas plans. Um, everybody, I hope has a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, and uh, yeah, you can listen to me on the Comics Conspiracy podcast. We just finished recording episode three, or sorry, four thirty-two, uh, which is our year end of the year part one. Re, you know what are our top comics of the year? Um, so we talk just round table about the comics and stuff like that. Uh, so whew, that's what I was up late and why I'm yawning now. Um, recording um, as well as the one for next week. Shh. Um, but, uh, yeah, so we have, um, so you can check that out and see what I enjoyed this year. Um, and, um, yeah, there's a link in the description below for that. You can help me and my fellow conspirators out through Patreon at www.patreon.com slash comics conspiracy for as little as a dollar a month. You help us with hosting fees, getting food sometimes, and of course getting products. So thank you very much to all of our backers. It helps out immensely more than you know, and it is much, much appreciated. Um, you can help me out a little more directly by purchasing anything through an Amazon link here or at conspiratorbrock.com. Or if you want to head over to my eBay page to see what I'm purging and getting rid of, you may find a gem that you like or something that you're curious about and you can pick it up there. So thank you everyone to who helped support me. It does, does help. Um, it's a rough time of year with Christmas and stuff. Um, but I'm hoping that we get to have a little bit of a good Christmas for me and the kids. Um, that's the plan for next week. Uh, next week is a tiny, tiny week. So I might, I'm most likely going to skip a video next week. Um, sorry. Um, I'm just with all the chaos going on with Christmas and Christmas Eve and all that stuff. I don't know if I'm going to do a video, so, uh, don't hold your breath for it. But if I do cool, uh, but there's not much coming out <laughs> that I'm actually going to be picking up. I think there's one book. Um, so yeah. Um, but we shall see. Other than that, I uh, should have a regular episode, um, going up the, uh, New Year's Day. Um, so this may be my last episode, uh, pull list for this year. Um, if it is, oh, cool. If not, oh, well, I'll still have more. Oh, I completely forgot. Duh. So those of you that stuck through this, um, are actually going to see the, the other thing I got, so um, it's I, I'm kind of dwindling. I'm kind of gonna probably stop picking up this line, but I've noticed that the line isn't really coming out as heavily anymore. Um, but that's the DC Bombshells line. Um, there is a new statue out um, this week, and uh, of course, me being me, I picked this one up, uh, and that is the Mary Shazam um, marching band um, bombshell. So I'm really curious to see how this one looks. Um, Mary Marvel or Mary Shazam has uh, always been an interesting character, at least from what I've read of her. Uh, so yeah, uh, I do want to point out that uh, I cannot wait for this one, the bombshell death figure that's coming soon. Oh, I can't wait. That will probably be my last bombshell statue. I'm not sure, um, but hopefully I will be able to get an unboxing video up for you guys of this um, before the end of the year. That is my goal. I know I've been slacking this, the, the tail half of this year on doing, um, unboxing videos, but with the move and all that stuff, like all of my statues are, are packed away and I just don't have, uh, 
easy access to them right now. So um, it, that's even the ones, I mean, even the ones I got that are sitting up here that I need to do videos for, I haven't just because it's, so, it's so chaotic and so busy um, that, yeah. So um, that's pretty much it. Follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Brock Sager. And um, hopefully everybody has a good Christmas and a happy new year. And I will see you next week, maybe.